listening party, and it was awesome. We did that at Gardopia Gardens. And I'm wearing a Gardopia Gardens shirt right here. Uh, Kamitria Ballard is in the room. What's up? Uh, she's super awesome. If you're missing teeth, Sheba Dental has a permanent solution to fix your smile and your confidence. At Sheba Dental, we specialize in a revolutionary procedure that restores your smile. Our mini dental implant procedure costs 20% less than other dental implants, with plans starting as low as $190 per month. I come to Sheba Dental because the dentists focus on professionalism, and the procedures are quick with recovery time. Now is your time to get your smile back. Call Sheba Dental today to schedule your free consultation. And she's a vendor extraordinaire. She takes vending more seriously than all of you, so don't attempt to compete. Do you snore or feel sleepy during the day? You may have obstructive sleep apnea. Sheba Dental may be able to improve the quality of your sleep with oral appliance therapy. And if you're already a CPAP user, oral appliance therapy can complement or even replace your CPAP therapy. Call Sheba Dental today for a free sleep evaluation consultation and a free sleep study to see if oral appliance therapy can help you get the sleep you've dreamed of. Sheba Dental, 210-448-1000. Uh, actually do compete, do compete, and then show numbers, we'll see who's best. I think next year at the Creator Games we're going to have like a vendor competition. So this year is just like me talking about certain things, uh, because it just takes time, but next year I'm going to start instituting different competitions, like some type of game competition, um, and stuff like that, because, yeah, it's... Right? Because people need to know. Everyone thinks we're all equal out here. I'm sure you've experienced it, someone who's one week into vending, and they're like, and they're talking to you like, oh, vending's so hard, and you're looking at them like, you haven't been in the game. You don't know it. You don't understand half of what it takes, and there's no ranking system. <laughs> but if they could see, if they could see a gold medal that says, uh, I'm a gold medal vendor, then they know that maybe they should be asking questions instead of running the mouth. I don't know. No, I'm sure. But it's true. It's true. I think competition helps us realize and get out of the delusion mode. American Idol is great. A lot of people found out they couldn't sing. Let's keep doing that. Let's, let's correct people. <laughs> I say that and then I sing and I'm not a good singer, but it doesn't matter. Do whatever you want. Follow your dreams. All right. So Tony Polenko is also in the room, which I'm going to learn more about him. Him and his wife are both here and they've written a book. My brother, uh, Pukola Laddington's also in the building, and he has an animation company uh, called Rooster Tunes. Um, so we got Sacred Fantasy in the building, phenomenal poet. I'm basically just going through everybody because 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 why not? Uh, it's part of the whole reason. Greater awards, shout out people. Uh, Bobby Smith is in the room, phenomenal uh, comedian, phenomenal comedian actually, uh, phenomenal comedian. Uh, and then he brought a comedian with him. I don't know his name. I know he texted it to me, but I wouldn't have a relationship. That's what I mean by I don't know his name. He might be better than Bobby. We don't know. We will next year because along with the vendor competition, I'm throwing in a comedian. There's lots of comedian competitions already, but I'm gonna be doing one of my own next year's, probably next year's Creator Games. Uh, who else is in the room? Who else is in the room? We got um, other people who I'm meeting for the first time, um, so I don't know their names uh, exactly. We got Miss Trina. <laughs> photographic memory. I went to my phone in my mind. I was like, the text message had a name. What was the name on the text message? It started with a T. It's not Tracy. Tree. No, it's, um, this is Dermot. Okay. That's one of the most embarrassing things. Saw a camera. I was like super confident too. I was breaking down how I like mastermind remember. Good strategy, sir. It doesn't work. All right. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, Germ what, what is it? Now I have to get it right. It's all Germans. Germans, okay. You'll see it in the video. I'm sure Miss Daptrol will capture some of it. There's no one capturing more vendor content than Daptrol Creations. That should actually be a whole playlist on your YouTube. Anyway, so here we are, Creator Games, and uh, it's going to kick off. Uh, it's supposed to kick off with poetry. Um, but I got my guy Mark Mark Solis with me here, and I wanted to talk about um, gaming a little bit. Oh, and uh, for those of you guys in the room, in the house, so you're not like super uh, confused as to what's going on, uh, you don't have to force yourself to pay attention. 
Um, definitely do whatever you were doing. But we are gonna, after, we're gonna do probably like two or three interviews up here, just super casually chilling. Uh, and then we're gonna start a set um, of, of some poetry and comedy and music outside. And it's gonna be fire. Um, yeah, but I got my guy Mark here with me. I want to talk about gaming a little bit. And just super briefly, like 15 minutes or so, because we already got our cool 30 minutes in. Was it 30 minutes? Right. It probably wasn't that long. But um, gaming. Gaming in San Antonio. What's your opinion? I want to start local. Actually, no. Let's start broad. What is the situation in your perspective of gaming uh, in, right now in the world? What's going on? Gaming 2019. Gaming in the world? Well, I guess like in terms of a, a market, in terms of an industry, it's growing huge. Um, it's already big in other places in, in Europe, but in America, it's definitely getting crazier or bigger. Like uh, now they're trying to incorporate it into universities for like, I guess, sports scholarships and I don't know, maybe degrees eventually. That would, that would be fucking crazy, but that'd be weird. And like you go to school to learn how to play a game and not just play the game, yeah. But um, and in, ter in terms of San Antonio, um, like uh, like gaming here in San Antonio is like an all-encompassing thing. There's like the people who play them professionally, casually, and then the people who make them. So uh, the group I'm a part of, the Greater Game Society, is like a whole of developers just enthusiasts, people who are curious in the, the craft of game development, and then just cosplayers and like, it, oh, it's an encompassing thing. And like that group has at least over a thousand members. Um, but then there's facilities being built in San Antonio over at Port San Antonio, the yeah. Innovation Center. Um, that's going to have an esports arena. Um, and then there's even going to be, they're making a non-profit, I forget the name of the non-profit, but it's being uh, run or being incorporated by uh, one of the, what's it called, gaming cafes here, I forget which one. Uh, but then there, there's that, and then schools are trying to get involved with, uh, with whatever's going on at the court. And in terms of game development, that's been... Like that's been growing, growing pretty steadily. Like not in terms of like AAA studios coming here and, and outsourcing work, but in terms of independent developers being able to work on their own projects. There's a huge community here too for just that. Like if you want to learn to make games, they have meetups. You can learn just of uh, or men have a mentoring situation. But uh, there's even going to start being workshops at like either Geekdom or Alamo City Studios where some of the members that are doing this professionally can like show 3D modeling or, or textures or uh, coding, scripting for games. Yeah. Um, and those are going to be, I think, free workshops that are just held at Geekdom or Alamo City Studios. Uh, but yeah, I think that's I think that's what's going on in the game here at the same time. That's so cool. I want to... To the opportunity in gaming now, I know there's there's a little bit of opportunity for gamers. Now, is there opportunity for gamers to make money, and is there opportunity for businesses to use games to bring business uh, to their businesses? Definitely, um, streaming. Uh, you just become a good personality. Uh, you grow an audience over a while, like people like uh, on Twitch. Uh, there's people like Shroud and uh, Ninja that just like literally generate thirty to fifty thousand dollars a month from like streaming donations and subscriptions and just uh, sponsorships. So how businesses get involved with gaming is that they usually do sponsorships either through a venue at an event or through uh, a streamer themselves, so personalities to some professional. Um, that's how they usually advertise when it comes to gaming. Um, so the same way like you, like a, a business would sponsor a football game or something like that at a high school, 
that's kind of how I see where it's going to go, is that they're just going to have banners in the background, or they're going to have their logo on some print at the venue, or they're just somewhere their presence will be known at the venue, or through the personality of whoever the professional is. Mm -hmm. That's super cool. I, I, I have this bad habit when like people are talking and they say something that like inspires me, I start to like fade out and just like think about all the possibilities. Um, Cause that, that has a lot of, to do with why I'm doing this event here. One, you know, clap, clap everyone for yourselves for being here today. What I love about, um, what, I lo what, I, what I like about this one, cause I've, I've done, a, you know, events really, it's not that long. There's people who've been in the game for like 20 years, but for, I've done events for like five years or so. And whenever, you know, you're doing an event, the first thing you have to think about, shout out to Alex, cool, amazing comedian, in my opinion. Some people think he's bad, but um, anyway. Uh, the first thing you think about in choosing an event <laughs> is you choose the, <laughs> you choose the venue. And um, I think we've been brainwashed, okay, to, to a huge extent, because so much of the time we think, you know, um, a bar, right? And uh, the, the premise is, you go do your event at a bar, and one or two things will happen. Selling tickets, that's cool. I mean, if you can sell tickets, then it doesn't matter what room it is, right? You can rent out a room, which is an event center, and then just go there and there, and if you want to sell alcohol, cool. But the other premise is, like, you're making money for this bar, right? Like, that's the idea. Like, you, everyone who comes is going to spend 30 to something dollars, or much less, if they're like Alex, you know? Because usually it just brings like three dollars for a couple of stars or something like that. If there are, if there's like a discount that <laughs> But the idea is that the people you bring are gonna spend money at the bar and then that's gonna generate some sort of money that could somehow be able to kick back to you. That's a really interesting theory. Um, and I think that it doesn't work very well right now, especially when the groups of people um, are becoming tighter and tighter, especially in a city like San Antonio, where it's a lot of tight groups and not so much people just moving en masse for entertainment. You know, like in LA, people are just like, you're going out. Or what are you, you're just going out. But in, in, uh, in San Antonio, it's a little bit different. You move based off of um, your highest level personal goals, and, and then only barely, but mostly you move inside of like social groups and stuff like that. Um, so how do you do that if you're bringing five people to a location as a comedian, or let's say even 10 people as a location, if the, if the bar is making $500, I know this is a boring explanation, but if the bar is making $500 off the people that you brought, how much are they going to pay you? Now, that's almost always nothing, right? Um, because that's not that much money. They have, they have overhead, they have a lot of other stuff, and if you weren't there, maybe make, you know, close, you have an opinion on that? Uh, with my events, if I do it at a bar or yeah. a nightclub, yeah. I always take the door. Yeah, right. And selling tickets, selling door, that's always cool. Alex? Uh, from what I've heard of yeah. events, whether, uh, whether it's poker or comedy, if, mm -hmm. you, if you can promise $400 in a bar, in, in sales, you should get 25% back. Yeah, and that's good too. And but and you know, and, and and if you can promise $400, I just think that the amount of work that you're putting in usually in San Antonio to get those $400, you're obviously gonna have another job. Because 25% of $400, which it's gonna take you a whole month to get that guarantee of $400, most likely, is not going to pay for all the Whataburgers you need to eat that month. It's not gonna happen. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> so you're, gonna, you're probably going to have to do something else. And I think uh, there's so many other businesses that we can make these types of alliances with because essentially you're providing foot traffic. Why not provide that foot traffic um, for something that's not only uh, a, like a better product, like a healthy product, something that does something good for you, but why not do it with something that makes more money than that? So that let's say if you were able and you're not like coercing people into destroying their lives. And I'm not hating that much on bars. I don't think all bars should be a boss or anything like that. Like, uh, you, you might catch me in one. Every now and then. Every now and then. Uh, but, um, but I do think there's a lot to be said for us really taking the initiative to make connections with a lot of the other businesses 
um, in our communities. So I just took a huge tangent. You were talking about how businesses can support um, video games. I think we should do that with every business. You know, why why is it that we can't make long term um, relationships with more dental offices? Shout out to Sheba Dental. Everyone clap for Sheba Dental. Why can't we make more long term relationships with dental offices and 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 uh, hospitals and lawyers? And, and I know a lot of people do. I'm sure you've gotten some sponsors from some of those people, some of those types of businesses, right, Steel? I know you're big on that. And so um, I'm glad to have you here, too. And I just want to push more people, because I wish I knew that when I first started, you know, rather than doing two or three. Actually, I had fun in all my, my early shows. I'm not going to say that. It was fun just getting better at doing shows. But um, I have something to think about, something to think about, especially when you're trying to figure out how can I take my revenue to twice what it is. You know, for next month, how can I get to the point where you know at least thirty percent of my bills are getting paid from things that I'm super excited about doing? And I think it really is figuring out more and more how I can move in that direction. And she was uh, provided me that opportunity to think more about that. So I want you guys to really high level, high level. The more of you that, um, um, actually, no, I don't want to phrase it like that. It's a swap way of doing this. Uh, I just want, I want Shiba, if you need a dentist, who here needs a dentist? Raise your hand. Anyone? Any people in need of dentists? You're all liars. We all have teeth in our mouth. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna play this game all day, people. Okay? When I can see, when we can make eye contact, <laughs> it's gonna be an issue. <laughs> I'm just joking. I know everyone at the back didn't even hear my question, so I'm really talking mostly to you guys and Kevin, who's been here before. And Alex a little bit. Alex, you don't need a dentist? I do need a dentist. Why didn't you raise your why didn't you raise your hand? I did. Oh. Okay. Well anyway, here you are. You're here. You've been avoiding it? It's today. The cavity's getting filled. Um, and so that kind of thing, I think that's really cool. Like being able to support what you're doing by placing yourself in a place where the activity is actually a progressive part of your life. You know what I mean? Like most people have dental insurance, not everybody. But you're not even so you're not even really paying for the bulk of it. Your insurance pays anywhere from sixty to ninety percent. I know that sounds super boring, but it's actually super cool. Anyway. Anyway. So I hope I hope this event is if anything for like those people who are cool and friends of mine that uh, for those of you watching, those of you listening on the podcast, you can actually see more and more this year especially what I'm about which is um, increasing revenue in a way that helps. Yes, I want to make money. Who else wants to make money? Okay, okay. Everybody wants to make money. Um, but at the same time, I think we have to be really mindful about sustainability because it actually is one of the biggest keys for us making money. What's cool to me about, I, I know I'm going too into it, but I'm trying to like find the, the right point of it. What's cool to me- Some, not really health, but like I guess, just all these random aspects that happen every now and then, like a car fucking breaks down, or um, like, like you know, some relative gets sick out of nowhere, and like, um, just things that could make or break someone like in a vulnerable time and they don't have to choose between uh, like either doing their passion or just going to a regular job or, or doing the thing that you're good at but you don't really want to do but, um, but when it comes to like venues and uh, you pretty much using any venue as like a, a sponsor or for just an event. Like that's the idea. Like any, it doesn't matter what type of business you are. If you if you can build brand, events is definitely a space you can get to. Um, especially like um, most of our home service clients, they can just easily sponsor. Um, like it depends. It depends. Like. It's how you can sell them on that idea. It's just like, what's what's their ROI on sponsoring an event? Like, how many eyes are going to be on it? What are the type of leads that you could be bringing or people that would be seeing it? And it really depends on what type of event it is. Um, and sometimes, actually, it doesn't even matter what type of event it is. It, it depends on how you you, you bring it and, and you, you, 
bring it together and sell it. Um, like Coca Cola could be doing, could be sponsoring podcasts like this for communities. They could be doing that definitely. Yeah. When's the last time you saw a polar bear ad on your Facebook feed or your Instagram feed? And you haven't been. And so, what is Coca Cola as a brand now? What could it be doing for communities? Uh, for I guess like you know, Best Buy does like this teen tech program where they create clubhouses in low income areas. It's where I'm a mentor at. Um, and we provide workshops there where like they just get mentors either from the tech community or from entrepreneurs in the area and they give like these workshops or classes at, a, at the clubhouse. Um, so that's another way to build brand. You literally just establish a resource in a low income, in, low income area for for people to use, you know, uh, that's just my idea. And there's a ton more ideas like that, and um, yes, thank you. And I hope we continue to jump into ideas like that over the course of these two days, because we are going to be here uh, again tomorrow. Well, that's interesting. We're going to be here again tomorrow. Are you coming tomorrow? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. you said you were going to come tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, that, 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 that's super cool. Uh, there's going to be some different people here. Who else is coming tomorrow that's not coming today? I don't remember. But definitely day two is going to be fun. Uh, and I want to dive more into that for these two days. And I really want, especially for the people who are here, um, who are in my circle, I hope that this is a dope collaborating time. They get to touch on some cool stuff. But anyway, once again, this is the Creator Games. Uh, sponsored by Shiba Dental, the dental office. I'm gonna take a break. Uh, for, actually, it's not a break, but uh, this podcast is over. Um, Tony's here, and then actually we need to jump into some. I think we're gonna jump into some poetry right now. I think we're gonna jump into some poetry. I think it's about time. I think it's about time. Uh, thanks, Mark. I appreciate it. If you're missing teeth, Sheba Dental has a permanent solution to fix your smile and your confidence. At Sheba Dental, we specialize in a revolutionary procedure that restores your smile. Our mini dental implant procedure costs 20% less than other dental implants, with plans starting as low as $190 per month. I come to Sheba Dental because the dentists focus on professionalism, and the procedures are quick with recovery time. Now is your time to get your smile back. Call Sheba Dental today to schedule your free consultation.